sacrifice oh he the faithful words of Christ ancient world ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts all of the ancient words in fact ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Alright, let's be seated. We're going to start something today. We started in our prayer session, we started the believers' battle. How many of you in the prayer service? Okay. We started that on Friday and it was very outstanding. We are starting a series today on the fruits of the spirit the fruit not fruits singular the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the fruit of what the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22 Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. Now let me start to explain to us. Any believer who doesn't have the Holy Spirit does not have the promise of God. Because Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, He that has not the Spirit of God is none of his. If you do not have the Spirit of God, you are none of of his Ephesians 1 13 describes him as the seal the promise that is the seal that we have received the seal of the Holy Spirit of promise Ephesians 4 verse 30 said with the Holy Spirit we have been sealed unto the day of redemption actually it says grieve not the Holy Spirit with which you are sealed on the day of redemption in John chapter 7 verse 38 and 39 Jesus said he that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And verse 39 says, This spake he of the Holy Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. And don't you forget, are you following me? Okay, I'm just trying to talk about the Holy Spirit first before I now talk about the fruits of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is very important in the life of a believer. When you offend God, when you sin against God, the first thing that is tempered with is your relationship with the Holy Spirit. That is why when David was crying out in Psalm 51 verse 11, he said, cast me not away from thy presence and take not. That psalm, I told us before, please balance this microphone, please, something is not right. I told us before that every psalm David wrote until you are in the mood 
David was when he wrote that psalm, the psalm may not work for you. It's not about quoting a psalm. It's being in the mood he was in when he gave that psalm. Amen. I said amen. amen. So it's important that we know the Holy Spirit. We know how to relate with the Holy Spirit. Don't forget the Holy Spirit comes. If you ask God for the, for the Holy Spirit, He will give it to you. And the Holy Spirit, I told us, the Holy Spirit is not, the Holy Spirit is not a thing. It's not a feeling. The Holy Spirit is a person, but not a human being. The Holy Spirit is what? But not... The Holy Spirit is what? A person, but not a human being. A human being is made up of bone, flesh, blood. But a person is made up of three things. Will, intellect, emotion. Will, intelligence, emotion. Ephesians 4.30 that we just quoted now. It's a grief, not the Holy Spirit. So he has emotion. When you grieve someone, it means you have, a, you have hurt the person's emotion. So, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you are hurt his emotion. First, um, Corinthians chapter 12 said, The Holy Spirit giveth to every man gift as he will. So, the Holy Spirit has will. We see that he has emotion, he has will. First Corinthians chapter 2, if you read from verse 9 down to 11, 12, 13, it says, that what knoweth the mind of a man, said the spirit of man that is in man. No man knoweth the spirit, the, the things of the spirit of God, except the spirit. First Corinthians 2, not 12, please. That of the gift. That of the gift is First Corinthians 12. This of the intellect is First Corinthians 2 from verse 9. Now, if you even study well, you discover the only sin that cannot be forgiven is what? This is a Bible church, right? What is the sin that can't be forgiven? What, what is it? And if you listen to the teaching I did on the Holy Spirit, you would have understood what blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is. Right? Because people say, um, and how many of you have had that question? You've asked that question, it has worried you that the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit can, against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. So it has worried you, you've thought about it. Raise your hand. You really don't know what it is. I explained that to us. Mark chapter 3. If you read from verse 22 to verse 30, you will understand what God meant when he talked about the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Mark, they are bringing acts. Who is on that council today? I release the Holy Spirit into your life. <laughs> He's just making so many mistakes. Okay, bring it up again. Mark 3 from verse 22. Brother, you don't have Bible? You don't have Bible? Go behind. Go behind. Go behind. Go behind. Somebody has sit on this seat. And don't ever sit in front of me without the Bible. Christianity is free, but you must buy Bible. And the scribes, bring the echo on, and bars down. And the scribe which came down from Jerusalem said he had Bezebub and by the prince of the, the devils does the devils cast it out can you just move on he called them unto him and said in parables how can satan cast out satan go on if a kingdom divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his goods. For as very I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. And blasphemy whatsoever they shall blaspheme. But he that blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. And look here. God can forgive all sins, but cannot forgive sin against what? Alright, so from that place where we have read, what is sin against the Holy Ghost? 
Now, Jesus did miracles. As he did, many of you, many of you looking at me now, you have sinned against the Holy Ghost. In fact, you sinned against the Holy Ghost daily. I'll explain. Jesus did miracles. When he did those miracles, people started giving glory to the devil. Say, ah, it's not the power of God. It's fake. It's, it's fake. It's charm. Anytime you ascribe the move of God to the devil, the power of God to the devil, you have sinned against the Holy Spirit. That's why you must be careful. That pastor is fake. That pastor is fake. That's why I say many of us, many people you see today are sinning against the Holy Spirit. A pastor may not be perfect. That doesn't make him fake. It's only God that's perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Luke 6, 40. Matthew 5, 48. Be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Luke, 6, Luke chapter 6, verse 40. A disciple is not greater than his master. But if any man wants to be perfect, let him be like his master. So, everyone is working towards perfection. Now, he says such a person cannot be forgiven. Why? It is the Holy Spirit that works the process of conviction. When you see somebody crying, the message is going on, and the person breaks down and begins to cry. Tears come. How many of you, a message has come before, and you, you saw yourself in tears? <laughs> and I know some of you from your face. I know that you, are, you will never cry. I can see from your face. You cry for what now? And you think it's, you have been a man. No, you have ever been moved by God in message or worship and you just start crying. Let me see your hand. <laughs> I see it now. There are some brothers in this church I know. If Christ appears and looks at them like this, they will look at him back. <laughs> now, do you know what made you cry? It was not the song. As the song left there, the Holy Spirit touched it and touched you. So it's the Holy Spirit that moves on a man to say, Oh Lord. Bible says we convict the world of sin. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to convict you, you cannot repent. If you don't repent, you cannot be forgiven. So when he says that he that blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, he said he that gives and ascribes what God has done to the, uh, no, to the devil and gives the devil all the accolades, that person has grieved God and he cannot in, give himself to the process of repentance. To be initiated now having said all that when the holy spirit comes into the life of a believer of a person if the only evidence listen speaking in tongues is not evidence of the holy spirit Receiving the Holy Spirit comes with evidence of speaking in tongues. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking in tongues is not evidence. You can speak in tongues without having the Holy Spirit. But you cannot have the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. Do you get that? There are people that speak in tongues and say, oh, because they speak in tongues, they have the Holy Spirit. No, sir. Speaking in tongues is not evidence of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that brings evidence of speaking in tongues. So, the, when you become a believer and you receive the Holy Spirit, <laughs> And you speak in tongues, which is good. There is something that confirms the residential presence that the Holy Spirit stays in you. It is called the fruit. Now, if you read, if you study what the Bible says there, the Bible listed them love, temperance, patience, meekness. They are nine. And using the word nine, Having nine, it should not be called fruit. It should be called fruits. Because it, it, it's, not, it's more than one. You are listing different traits. It should be called fruits. 
No tree, no single tree, produces several kinds of fruits. It produces one fruit, but in quantity. If it's one spirit in you, it produces one fruit, but the fruit can manifest in nine dimensions. Hello? Hello? Now, the fruit of the Spirit is a proof of the Spirit. Now, you do not know a, a person's baptism of the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues. You know it by his fruits. Matthew 7, 16. Matthew 7, 20. Matthew 7, 16. Matthew 7, 20. By their fruit. You shall what? In 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 30, and Isaiah 37, 31, 2 Kings 19:30, Isaiah 37, 31. He said, The house of the remnant of Judah that remain shall bear fruit downwards and take root, uh, shall take root downward and bear fruit upward. It is first your roots that determines your fruit. Until the Holy Spirit is in you, you cannot produce the fruit. Many people try to produce the fruit of the Spirit without the Spirit. So if you want the fruit of the Spirit to manifest in your life, you must first have the Holy Spirit. And when you have the Holy Spirit, the fruit... Now, write this down. When seeds are planted in the right environment and given the right attention, they produce fruit effortlessly. When seeds are planted in the right environment and given the right attention, they produce fruit effortlessly. Effortlessly. You don't struggle for it to come. It is effortless. 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 It is effortless. Why? Because the seed has been planted. In Mark chapter 4, verse 8. Mark chapter 4, verse 8. He said, and others fell on good ground. As it fell on good ground, what happened to it? It yielded fruit. So it's very important that your heart must be a soil that is good enough for the Holy Spirit before you start manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. Fruits are important. You cannot be a believer who has the Spirit of God and you are not producing fruit. Talent is good. Gifts are good. But can I say this to you? Gifts can deceive. But fruits cannot deceive. Talents can deceive. Can even destroy. But fruits cannot deceive. Samson, one day Samson went somewhere he saw a lady the lady was a harlot he went into the harlot and in those days they have city gates because of their enemies all cities were first round you remember jericho in joshua chapter 6 jericho was walled round okay every city there was first round because of enemies and you know soldiers that were coming to invade the city so they fenced, and they are just one gate now the gate of a city should be bigger than this church. A city, not a town, massive city is that gate that leads everybody in. Massive, bigger, massive. When I was doing a study on the wall of Jericho, the wall of Jericho, it was first round. I discovered the wall of Jericho was so thick that 500 soldiers could run on horses on top of the wall conveniently. 
That's what God brought down. I didn't say 50. 500. Imagine the wall, a fence so strong that on top of the fence, one, two, three, four, five hundred can stay conveniently and ride their horses. So the gate of the city was so big and Samson was so small. This Samson you are hearing about that tore the mouth of lion wasn't a big man. He was very tiny. If you have watched this movie, they call Samson and Delilah. That movie is 419, fake. Because in that movie, you see Samson with muscles, right? With biceps and six pack and everything. You see Samson like that. That's not true. Because if Samson had so much muscles, the Philistines would not have been wondering where his strength came from. It's because he was so tiny. When he would, tiny man, he would see a lion. Ah, where is his strength coming from? A man who has muscles, you should not worry, bother about his strength. Because from his muscles, you know he's strong. Samson was lepacious. Very tiny. He just walks. Carrying lion. <laughs> so Samson left that harlot. Because at night they locked the gate that Samson is not going to escape. So they locked the gate. All of them went to their houses. Because let's see how he's going to you know, go out of the city. Samson went to the city gate, shook the gate, uprooted the gate. He carried it and climbed a mountain. Now, when you carry something, that's bad enough. To carry something and still climb, it means the thing is effortless. Samson had gifts, but he did not have fruit. You don't judge people or follow or weigh people's spiritual standing by their gifts. The Bible says by their fruit. When characters begin to show up, certain attitudes show up, what makes a person who the person is, is his or her character. You can fake a promise. You can fake a statement. You can fake an attitude, but you cannot fake character. Being a child of God and being fruitless is unacceptable. Being a child of God and being fruitless is unacceptable. Genesis 1.22, be fruitful. Popular best of scripture, Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish. Genesis 9, verse 1. He said, And Noah was fruitful. Fruitful. In John 15. Okay, let's start from verse 1. Verse 1 says, I am the vine. My father is what? Hey, that's memory verse now. John 15 verse 1. I'm the true vine. My father is the what? Husband man. Verse 2. Every tree that brings forth fruit. Every branch in me that bears not forth fruit, he cut off. But every tree that brings forth fruit, he project in that he might bring more. So once you are not fruitful, what will God do to you? Mark 11. Start from verse 13. See how Jesus was angry at the fig tree. And what was the cause Jesus gave the fig tree? He said, no man, verse 14, no man eat of you thereof. No man eat fruits of you thereof. So once you are fruitless, you have the Holy Spirit in you, and these fruits are not manifesting. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Like I said, someone can have the Holy Spirit and not produce the fruits because he has not made his life a good soil. For the Holy Spirit to express itself. How many of you know it's not every seed that is planted that grows? Right? Some seeds are planted. They don't grow. There are many things involved. You could even plant something in a good soil. But because it's not nurtured, the weeds can affect it. So, once you have the Holy Spirit and you make your life a conducive place for the Spirit of God... The fruit of the spirit begins to manifest. Amen. 
the more you walk with God in the spirit the more fruits of the spirit you produce the more you walk with God in the spirit the more fruits of the spirit you produce Galatians 5 25 says we should both live and walk in the spirit Galatians 5 16 he says we should walk in the spirit so we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh as you walk in the spirit how do we walk in the spirit by living holy how do you walk in the spirit by living a life of prayer how do you walk in the spirit by living a life of fellowship Hebrews 10 25 Hebrews 10 25 he said forsaking not the assembly of the brethren as the manner of some is meaning some people will become so logical and they will feel there is no need for people to gather in church they will tell you the church is the individual the church is the person now that is you see not all truths are limited the church is the person the church is the person the church is not the building now that's correct at the same time that's wrong hello hello you in your house you are only part of the church you are not the church because jesus himself was somebody who always went to the physical building luke chapter 4 verse 16. he went into the synagogue as his custom is he came to nazareth when he has been where he has been brought up and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue. Give me the message. Give me message translation. Message. He came to Nazareth where he had been read. And as, as he always did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting. He stayed at home. He stayed at home. And said, is the church. Talk now. He stayed at home. And he said, it's the church. He said at home and he said, we had two or three are gathered. I'm there. How many of you know that, that they use that to back up the reason why they don't go to church? Jesus didn't say, we had two or three are gathered. That's a church. No, he said, I'm there in their midst. That is there in your midst doesn't make it a church. He only said, I'm there in your midst. Never said that becomes a church. He said, I'm there in your midst. If Jesus himself, it was a habit jesus was a committed church member the son of god whose mother gave birth to him from a virgin womb yet he was a committed church so where do you get your theory from you are only angry you are just angry the devil has filled your heart with anger Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Once you walk uprightly with God, and that, that should be your concern. That should be your concern. There are so many things God has reserved for those who follow Him. Don't allow things by your side distract you. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flocks, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Psalm 84, 11. The Lord God is a song and a shield. He will give grace and glory, and no good thing will leave withhold. From them that walk up right there. So when you walk with God, Romans 8 1. Romans 8 1. There is, therefore, now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after, but after. Oh, those of you that say we are no long, longer under law, we are under grace. No! We are under law. Let I show you? Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin. When you leave one law, you enter another law. I stumbled into a book written by a man called E.M. Bounds. Another book written by Kenyon is the book that speaks about the finished work of Christ 
um, grace. And I studied that book so much that they say once you are saved, you are forever saved. Once you're born again, you're born again. Sin is not the focus. Christ has paid for it. That Christ has finished the work. And I was preaching that. When my pastor is preaching then, I don't take pen and paper because I always feel my pastor doesn't know anything. Who was my pastor? The late Archbishop of Idaho. So when he's preaching, I bind you, Satan. You need deliverance. I say, uh uh-uh. You have been delivered from the power of darkness. When he talks about sacrifice, I say, Christ has paid the ultimate sacrifice. What sacrifice? I was doing that. And I said, I was preaching one day, and I said, Christ has done everything. We don't need to do anything. Christ has finished the work, and the Holy Spirit said, shut up. I had it on the altar. I got home, and I said, Lord, what was that? He said, I have not finished the work. And he asked me a question. What did I tell you when I was leaving this world? Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. He said, if I finish the work, I will send you. I said, here? I said, ah. He began to show me some things. He said, no. Christ. Okay, let me show you something. <laughs> you are looking at me. Oh, if any man is in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed away, all things become new. So why do they say it? They say to you that once you are born again, your past never existed. Your past is history. Your, in fact, there was no you. It's a new you. You see, eh? <laughs> if you are reading Bible, don't just carry one verse. Read all the verses before there. It's like you walk in somewhere, and they say, what's your name? And they say, hmm, that's what Peter did. Then you just run. Hey, Peter did something, no? You have to put yourself in trouble because you didn't listen to the conversation that got there. What, what Paul was speaking in that 7 Corinthians 5, 17, what Paul was saying before time, when Jesus was alive, physically walking on the face of the earth, Paul knew him. But Paul saw him as Jesus, Joseph's son, carpenter. Saul said, I knew him after the flesh. He said, but this was the man that brought salvation. I knew him after the flesh. I knew him physically. I despised him. I commonized him. I didn't value him. He said, from that day, I've learned my lesson that once somebody is born again, I should not see him as a commoner. I should not look down on him. No. Verse 16, bring verse 16 before 17. Wherefore, henceforth, we know we know man after what? After what? Though we have known Christ after the flesh, henceforth we know no more. We saw him as a natural person who has no strength. But now I've made up my mind that once somebody is born again, I don't see whether you are poor, whether you are broke, whether you are stranded. My mentality about you change. Not that you don't have a history. Not that you're not coming from somewhere. I'll give you an example. I've always done this before when I give an example. I said a young man meets a woman. Both of them are not born again. They commit immorality and they give birth to a child. The child is there. Now they get born again. After they give birth to the child. How many of you know as they are born again, God has forgiven them? Their life of sin is over. Is the child over? Is the child over? No matter how safe they are, they've got to deal with the consequences of that child. When you are born again, why do we raise up warfare prayer? You deal with the effect of the past. The custodian of grace is Paul. The first man, Jesus himself was grace. Jesus was not a custodian of grace. He was grace himself. But the first man that preached grace was Paul. And yet Paul said, I don't frustrate the grace of God. The same Paul said very clearly, put on the whole. I thought Christ has finished the work. Why do we need to fight? We wrestle not against but against I thought Christ has finished the work today there are many messages that make you spiritually lazy lazy a young girl watched me preach on TV she was listening to some pastors who were preaching about grace and it got to a point she didn't know what to believe anymore she stopped going to church. She stopped paying offering. She stopped paying tithe. She stopped calling any pastor, father, and the Lord. She stopped everything. So she heard me preach. She watched me first time, second. By the fourth time, she fell on her knees and said, Lord, I was sorry. She reached me through a text message. And she said, I am seeing balance. Because there are some 
you that preach the gospel and they tell you everything about them is demon before they drink coke they will bind they will bind before they eat pounded yam they will bind 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 they want to take rice and stew they will bind 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 husband and wife two of them they are praying in morning devotion and they are praying against themselves oh you have not seen prayer the woman is not happy you tell her to round up we are in trouble morning devotion the wife is not happy and you say madam round up she will, she will pray against the husband father lord we are all gathered here this morning you know our hearts father there are people here who are wicked wicked men and they just come here they're clapping and clapping and deceiving us deceiving the children you know them lord Deliver them in Jesus' name. The husband said, Hey Lord, Ephesians 5. Women, submit yourself to your husband. Submit yourself. They are here, they are not submissive. <laughs> they are not submissive. You know them, Lord. Father, break them. Father, break them. Break them. Then in Jesus' name. Let them go. The woman said, Father, Lord, there's something I forgot to say. <laughs> I, was, I was praying before I got married. You were giving me signs, signs. But I was not sensitive. I pray for my children. That this mistake that I made, none of them here will make that mistake. <laughs> Why? They have been trained that everything is an enemy. You have to understand that there is a balance. So once you have the spirit of God and you walk with God, you begin to produce the fruit. What is the first fruit of the spirit? Love. That's what we're going to start with today. Love. Love. Galatians 5.22 The fruit... <laughs> the Bible is so sweet. Bring that thing up. Bring it up. Galatians 5.22 how many of you did English in school? How many of you sat for English in your SSC? Everybody, everybody now. English is composite. Put it down. How many of you, maybe in the higher institution, you majored in English? Okay. This is what the Bible says there. Somebody say, the fruit of the spirit is love, comma, joy, comma, peace, comma. That doesn't sound right in English. Because so long as you have several commas, it's supposed to be the fruits of the Spirit. Ah! Is it correct? But it says the fruit of the Spirit. Why? It is one fruit, but several manifestations. Love. Why did we bring love first? Love is what controls everything in the Spirit. Love. Love is what controls everything. Love is not a feeling. Love is an action. It's an action and a decision made by revelation. So somebody cannot even walk up to you and say, I love you. 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 It means nothing until an action backs it up. So love is not a feeling. The love or the emotional exchange between a restless boy and a restless girl that they can't sleep at night, they're on the phone 1 a.m., 2 a.m., is not love. It is lust. That's what seems good to your body, but that's not what will last. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with what? Look at it. Wait, look here, look here. With all thy heart, soul, might. All thy, all thy, and all thy, all thy what first? Followed by, followed by. Let me start from the last. Might is what you can see. Might is 
when you exhibit love. Now, let me say this, write this down. True love begins with loving God. True love begins with loving God. Now, let's talk about might. What that portion means by saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy might. How do you know somebody loving God with might? In church. Are you seeing that? This is might. Using energy. He's showing his love for God with what? Huh? But if he doesn't love God with heart, as he does this and does this, prayer are not answered, he becomes discouraged. Because he did not start with loving God with heart. Soul before might. But when somebody loves God from their heart, with their soul, before might, no matter what he's going through, he, he keeps working for God. Because the love is from their hearts. My problem is this. Many of us start with might, end with heart. You should start with heart, end with might. When somebody loves God from their heart, Oh boy, it's like it's like a love a man has for a genuine love a man has for a woman. When you meet a, a, a man, a pretty woman, educated woman, and sees a, a man he wants to marry, she doesn't have he doesn't have money, he doesn't have anything, he's stranded, he's just beginning life, and the lady said, I believe in you because you have vision. That's love from the heart. That's love from the heart. When there is no reason to even love. I've told our daughters here, yeah, you can marry a man who doesn't have money. You can marry a man who doesn't have a house, who doesn't have a car. Did you hear me? You can marry a man who doesn't have a car, doesn't have anything. But don't marry a man who doesn't have vision. That's what you need. Hear him talk. There's a difference between bragging Boasting, dreaming, and vision. Somebody desires to travel abroad, travel abroad, travel abroad. That's not vision. Amen. I've discovered that there is a group of people that always live in the past. Do you know they are? Those people that were deported from abroad. Any statement they make starts with when I was abroad. <laughs> they live in the past. When I was... You know what? They came against their will. Their mind is still there. So every reference they make, when I was abroad. They don't do this in America. They don't... I don't know. <laughs> Somebody, I've not seen him for about 17 years. I saw him. He saw me. He came to see me in Auchi. And he wore gloves. It wasn't a wedding. He wore gloves. So I had to shake his hand. He said, hey, he fixed it well. There was no coronavirus. <laughs> he fixed it well to shake my hand. I was confused. I shook his hand. And... They brought water for him. He said, no. Is it boiled? I was wondering. I said, where? Where you go? I have been around the world. I have used 18 passports. Where did you go to? He said, you know, actually, um, oh gosh, did they me get this house? <laughs> when I found them, where you go? He said, South Africa. I said, go outside. Go outside! South Africa is yonder. (laughs) 
Love is not a feeling. Somebody say love is not a feeling. So love God with your heart. And that is why when trials and troubles come, tribulations come, shakings come, things are happening, you are not bothered. You are not bothered. No matter what you do for God, no matter your actions for God, 1 Corinthians 13, 1, love, charity, is the virtue God is looking for. 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1, whoever is on that console, you have a lot of questions to answer when I'm done. Though I speak with tongues, I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I have become like a sounding bars and a tinkly simba. I'm in the choir. I'm in the usher department. I'm in uh, the protocol. I'm in the prayer band. I'm in all of this, and I'm not doing it because I love God. I am making noise. Can I get message from that? Message translation. Message. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries, making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump and is jump, but I don't love, I am nothing. Your what, W-O-R-T-H, your what in God, is directly proportional to your love for him. Your what? In God. So once you become filled with the spirit. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Once you become filled with the spirit. And you allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in your life. The first fruit. The, manifest, the first sign of the fruit that manifests in your life. Is you just see yourself loving him. There's no money, you are loving him. You are being persecuted, you are lo- that is a sign that that fruit is showing forth. You are, you are nothing because the greatest of all. There are three things that every believer must possess. But the greatest is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. There are by the three. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now abided faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these. I know what charity means. What's charity? There are three things. One is faith. Faith can disappoint you. You know, oh God, between now and tomorrow, oh God, between now and tomorrow, I need a miracle. Between now and tomorrow, oh God, you will do this in my life. Between now and tomorrow, oh God, that is faith. Tomorrow came. You did not see. So faith has failed. Eh? Luke twenty two thirty two. Jesus said to Peter, I prayed for you. That your faith fail not. So faith can fail. Luke twenty two thirty two. Faith can fail. I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail. Okay. When it refused to happen that tomorrow, you are waiting. Say, okay, Lord, I have hope. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, it can happen month end. That's what? That's what? Hope. That's no more faith. That's hope. But hope can be deferred. Proverbs 13, verse 12. <laughs> hope deferred make the heart sick. But the desire of the righteous is a tree of life. You waited till month end. It didn't come. So hope has now been deferred. What keeps you is love. Lord, whether it come this month, it doesn't come this month, I love you. Because love never fails. First Corinthians 13 verse 8. Charity fail it not. Please stop this faith and hope. Faith is good. Hope is good. But there are many of you that follow God only on the platform of hope and faith, not love. I told you the story of one of my daughters who said to me, Daddy, I want to talk to you. I said, what is it? He said, help me tell God that if between now and so and so time of the year, I'm not married. He will not see me in the church again. 
Tell him. So when she was going, I said, come, come. God has just given me an answer for you. He said, now, now. I said, yes. He said, what did God say? I said, God said, I should tell you, if you stop church, he will not miss you. No, it's very painful how some people think they are doing God a service. Someone said to me two days ago, he said, be, can you imagine? Monday, I go to pray. Everybody knows that. Monday is my prayer time. I was praying. He said, I started sending a message three days ago. He said, a message yesterday. And I saw a message today. He said, you are not replying me. I just picked the phone. He said, you have not been replying me. I'm not coming to church again. Uh-uh. What does that mean? <laughs> and I'm like, wait to Breaking news. This brother has stopped church. Apostle Suleiman is crying. <laughs> so I was wondering, like, does this guy know the pastor he's talking to? He said, coronavirus, there was no God in this church. I was shouting. <laughs> I was preaching to a teacher. Do I look like so? You think all this thing impresses me? <laughs> the best time I've enjoyed church was during coronavirus. That period, oh my God. As I finished preaching, 9.30, 10, I'm lying down on the bed. I said, can life be sweet like this? <laughs> no body for counseling. No queue. No house rent. No food, ch- pocket money. Nobody say, give me this. I just finished preaching, 9.30. I just enter the echo. I just go. When I lie down on the bed, I say, oh, I will roll. I will roll. <laughs> Sunday morning, oh no, wow. <laughs> a pastor who wants your money that will be bothered when you say you are not coming. A pastor who wants your offering. Who wants what you can get from. I don't need it. I don't know what comes in. I don't know what. It's not my business. So, you don't threaten God. I'll stop serving you. Lord, Lord, if you don't answer my prayer, I'll stop praying. Are you praying for God? Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Jesus that everything Jesus is going going through now Father, I pray for the Holy Spirit. Ah, ah. Since this world began, the Holy Spirit has been walking. Father, I, want, I pray for him. Let him rest. Give the Holy Spirit grace. <laughs> you are praying for yourself. Whenever you do anything, you are doing for yourself. He said, no matter what it is, love. Let's begin to see some things here. Verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 13. Who we'll examine that? Briefly, verse 4, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Let's be able to see the things about love. 1 Corinthians, charity suffered long. All right, can I get um, the message? Love never gives up. Write it down. Love is resilient. Love is resilient. If you love God, one of the signs to know you love God is that you are resilient. You are resilient. No matter the battles, no matter what you are seeing, the proof that you love God is that you keep fighting ahead. The devil never sees you cry. The devil never sees you question God. The devil never sees you ask God questions. The devil never sees you sit down. It's normal for you to be down once in a while when you go through challenge. But you never come to a point where asking God, Father, Lord, do you still exist? I wonder how that comes out of people's mouths. Job was a multi-billionaire. He was the richest man in the East. He was an evil man. The Bible says, <laughs> in Job chapter 1, from verse 1 to 2 and 3, <laughs> Job, Job chapter 1, 1 to 2. There's a man whose name was, who was in the land of, whose, whose name was Job. The man was perfect, upright, and all of that. Verse 2. Verse 3. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses. These were brands of cars. In those days, the brands of cars, oxen and asses, cars. 
So it's like somebody saying that the man had 7,000 Rolls Royce, 3,000 limousine, 500 Cadillac, 500 Ferrari. Yeah. So that this man was the greatest of all the men in main market only child. <laughs> nah. Job was that rich. Satan came. Satan took all his money. All his money that he had. You, you didn't have before. You, are, you didn't have. Rent, you can't pay. You are questioning God for money that you didn't have. Job had everything. Satan took all. And Satan took his health. Don't forget Job chapter 2 verse 4. Satan says skin for skin. All that a man has, he will give in exchange for his life. Satan took his health. And Job never opened his mouth to say, God, why? You ordinary rent. Ordinary school fees. You have written letter to God. One young man from Inugu. He was praying one day, carried chair, and he dropped the chair on the table. The chair dropped the chair and took a table, put a pen and a paper. He said, God to the Father. God to the Son. God to the Holy Spirit. Too. How many times did I call you? <laughs> if I join 419, it's your fault. If I become ritualist, it's your fault. Too. Sit down here. Tell me, where did that go wrong? <laughs> because he just couldn't make ends meet. Nobody who loves God gives up. Love is resilient. Bring that again. Message Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love is resilient. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Love is resilient. Who is on the console? God will help you after this service. When they close, just run. <laughs> love cares more for others than for love is selfless. Love is what? Selfless. Love is selfless. When I have the love of God and I greet Timothy, I greet Timothy. I'm a believer. I greet Timothy. I brought Timothy good morning. And he doesn't answer me. I don't say he ignored me. I say maybe he didn't hear me. Love thinks of others than itself. Are you following me? When you love people, you make excuses for them. You don't hold offenses against them. When you love people, you make excuses for them. You don't hold offenses. Sit down, Tim. You don't hold offense against them. Because sometimes, most of the things, you, you don't just sit down and you are, you're thinking about yourself, just yourself, yourself, yourself. A lady was talking to me about her husband. My husband and daddy. My husband and dad. My husband and daddy. My husband and dad. My husband and dad. When she finished, I said, okay, ma. Ma, what do you think you have done wrong? Nothing, no. Nothing. Nothing, no. When women come for counseling or prayer, I don't it's very easy. If a woman wants counseling, just let her talk. Don't stop her. Let her talk. Don't stop her. Just be quiet. She will talk and talk and talk and talk and she will talk the answer. <laughs> How can it? You don't say, hey, you don't, can you imagine? He now beat me. He now, he now slap me. In fact, from today, I'll be minding my business. Tell her exactly. In those days, I used to say, Shut up! Shut up! You keep quiet! Now I'll tell you, Shh! Hey, 
Can you imagine? I couldn't do that time. He didn't give me. He didn't give me this. He didn't, he didn't give me. Give me money for this. He didn't. In fact, from today, even if it's one night I have, I will manage it. She has already talked the answer to the problem. You know, say, she, she, that thing he said now is the Holy Spirit. It's God that gave you that idea. Do it like that. Can we pray? <laughs> Amen. So love is selfless. Put that, that scripture on the screen. Oh, Lord. Put that scripture on the screen. Never gives up. Love doesn't want what it doesn't. Does it want what it doesn't? Love is content. Love is contentment. Anything God has given you now is the best for now. You don't have a car now. God knows you don't need one now. He knows if you have a car now, you will not be in church. You'll be in the mechanic workshop. <laughs> There's someone who has been battling with his car for one week. <laughs> He's been battling with that car. He said, Daddy, he said, remember just 28,000 to buy one thing. I sent it to him after saying a long test. When, when, when a man has helped you, you don't know what to say. He now says, sir, they say if I get like 15,000, I sent him. He now comes and says, sir, I'm ashamed. I don't know how to tell you. They have just detected the fault now. It's the job boss. And he said, you're not angry. I said, no. I know what a bad car can do to somebody. A bad car is worse than a devourer. A bad car is a witch. <laughs> it doesn't stop when you are going nowhere. It stops when you, your children, your wife are well dressed. <laughs> and it does not stop at home. He does not stop near houses. He stop in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had a car in 1998. 97, no. 90, 96, 96, 97. I had a car. It was a Mazda. Mazda 626. From here to Benin takes us 11 hours. <laughs> here to have here, two hours. We'll drive to Polygate. It can't be hot. We'll turn it off. We'll come down. We'll open the bonnet. <laughs> we'll wait. It will cold. We'll off it again. We'll drive. We'll start seeing it showing red, red, red. We'll park. We'll wait again. We'll drive for like four. There's always one problem. If we cross this one, we're always happy. It will heal. When the car gets over here, it starts going back. Hey! <laughs> so if, I, if I'm invited to preach in Benin, I must go a day ahead. So there was a program. We prayed, we had faith. We believed God that the car was going to work. So the program was as the of God, I think Boba Hill or something. <laughs> Before then, I'd already sent two of my pastors. I said, you could go in case we don't make it. You preach. We started the journey 6 a.m. from Auchi. We got to Boba Hill 9 p.m. People were going home. <laughs> when you see the glory, there's a story. Oh. <laughs> I just got there. They said, why did you come? I said, program. They said, we are close. <laughs> I look at the car. So I, under I understood what he was going through. Amen. Whatever God gives you now, be satisfied with it. Even if it's not the best, it will be part of your story tomorrow. Part of your story. 
I had two shoes, two shoes. One of them was very bad. The other one was, the other one pulled off. And mama was, mama and I, we had a date. So I went out with her. We used to go somewhere. You know that the woman is in this church? She used to live near Zongo. She's a member of our church. I don't know if she's in church now. We used to meet at her place. Not my place, not her place, that woman's place. So we sit in a city room with Jesus. One day I was in the woman's house. I took one brother's shoe. I borrowed the shoe. I clean it. I deck. You see the gate on my on my shirt. The gate on the, the key demon. As I was talking to Mama, this guy just came into the place. Where you go? Where you go? I'm looking for you since pull my shoe. So I was trying to say, um, Sister Lizzie, you know, we normally exchange shoes like that. He said, which exchange? Your two shoes are bad now. Do you have an issue? Pull my shoe. When you marry a person that has a vision, that has a vision, she didn't make any comment about it. She just continued talking. She didn't even make reference to, ah, ah, your shoe. Just, it's okay, it's okay. Like we're saying, we just continue talking. Me, I, I became a stammerer. Um, 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 um. I was imagining, what is she thinking? And when we are leaving, she told me, it's you I love, not clothes, not shoe. Don't impress me. Do what you know you are okay with. I said, I know, you know, I have shoes, but you know. <laughs> Today I have a room for shoes. All my pastors, when they enter into that room, they're, Jesus, are you selling? I said, no, no. Pack as you can pack. Because I don't know which year I will finish wearing them. Whatever, listen, whatever punishes you today, it's not a prayer, it's a statement. Whatever punishes you today is what you are going to have in abundance tomorrow. <laughs> Love God! I'm telling you the things that manifest the, when you have the, the fruit of the spirit which is love these are the things that begin to manifest as you walk with God bring that up again you are content you don't have money for a cab you are walking home and there is this joy in your heart as you are going home with your bible you, are, you are, don't have money for transportation you have this joy you have this joy you have this joy you are not frowning at people who didn't give you lift there are some brothers you don't talk to anymore in church. Why? Because they saw you and they didn't carry you. So that's your anger. No. Lord, I don't have anything physically on me now, but I have you. So long as I have you, I'm satisfied. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head. Love is not arrogant. You love God, you are not arrogant. And that's your leadership. Bring up verse 5. You are not arrogant. These are the things you see in the life. I'm giving the qualities you see. Doesn't fault itself on others. Isn't always me first. Me first. Love has no personality concept. Love is always God first. Not my will, but thy will be done. Luke 22, 42. John chapter 3 verse 30. The word of God says he must increase and I must decrease. Luke 22, 42. If it be thy will, let this cup pass over me. Bring up verse 5 again of 1 Corinthians 13. Not, not what you want. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Not what you want, but what he wants. Does not force himself on order. Is it always me first? Jesus said, when you walk into a gathering, when you always think, listen, always esteem people. 
when you walk into a gathering, Jesus said, don't go to the high place. If they invite you anywhere, don't just walk and to sit down. Jesus said, stand. Sit in the crowd. No matter who you are, let them call you from them. Matthew chapter 5. And honor you with the high table. He said, don't go to the high table lest they call you from the high table into the crowd. It is more shameful for you. So, when you love, it's not always about you. It's not always about you. You position God first. You position others first. Love always thinks of others. What can I do? I have never gathered money to buy something for myself. If I'm thinking of get, believing God for money, it's to meet someone's need. Someone told me they need something for that supply so I can attend to this person. It's always about people first. Those who, those who make others priority will never miss prosperity. Those who make others first can never be last. The problem you have is that you are living a life that is all about you. What you want. What you desire. A lady wants to get married and she brings a list. The first thing on the list is, Father, give me a man that can take care of me and my siblings. Very important. Number two, Father, give me a man that is handsome. Number three, give me a man that will love me for who I am. Number four, give me a man, oh God, that is intelligent and very tall. Number four, you see, it's all about what you want. What you want. There are men like that. All these qualities you want, there are men like that. There are men that are very nice, intelligent. They will take care of your sibling. But the truth is, if those men meet you like this, the way you are, what are you doing to develop yourself? It's always about God first. When I pray, I tell the Lord, every plan I have that is not part of your plan, no matter how I struggle to achieve them, may they not work. Every plan that you have that is not part of my plan, no matter how I struggle to escape it, let it catch up with me. Not my will. What am I doing now, Uchi? If I'm to go by my will, me. Stay here. Not my will. As soon as he said, this is the place, it became heaven to me. Because anywhere God leads you to is the best. Somebody say, I'll put God first. I can hear you. Say, I'll put God first. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love does not hold on to past wrongs. Love does not hold on to past wrongs. Love doesn't hold on to past wrongs. There are so many of us. This is where we have a problem. Too many people have hurt us. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me this afternoon. See, there are so many of us today, we have been hurt so badly. People have done things to us. We, don't just, we are not just remembering the things they did. We are avoiding the people. Whenever we see them, hatred comes up in our hearts. And that's just the only loophole in your life that the devil is holding against you. They actually offended you. You never expected they would do what they did. You trusted them. You loved them. They stabbed you. They hurt you. Anytime you see them, if both of you were just alone in this world, you would have done something to them. You are hurt. Especially when some of the things they said about you were not true. 
Do you know the pain of innocence holds than the pain of guilt? When people came and lied to you. Imagine, imagine a woman married to a man now. After many years, the man finds out everything the man has said is a lie. A young girl. Her father died. And the father left so much for them. Lands, buildings. And the uncle needed it by all means. But this girl was a lawyer. And she was tough. She was not married. The uncle could marry with a young looking man in Lagos. And they treated into the girl. Bought gifts. We called her many times. Gave her shoulder so much care. She opened up. Told the man about the properties. The man said, let's sell them and invest. Sold everything. Gave him the money. That was the end of it. Gave the uncle his share. His share. She took the other ones. He took the other ones. The lady wanted to die. Cried. Hatred. And someone directed her because she was to she was doing her masters in law. So when she came for prayer, she never mentioned that. She didn't talk about that. She was asking God for success. And the Lord opened my eyes and I asked her, Who is Femi? My hands left my hands. I started crying. And she narrated the story. What the young man has done. And God said, Forgive. He said, eh? For what? A man of God called Dr. Yonggi Cho is the pastor of the largest church of the world in the world. He has retired now. A man had a man had hemorrhoids. The man was bleeding like a woman, bleeding. And Yonggi Cho was going to the airport. This man met Dr. Yonggi Cho and said, "Pray for me." So what is the matter? He said, "I'm bleeding." I'm bleeding. And we just said, give me your hand. And he heard the word. He told the man, forgive your wife. The man removed his hand. He said, no. And young Jesus said, God, if you don't forgive your wife, he can't heal you. The man said, no problem. He was walking away. Young Jesus said, what? Please come. Sit down. He cancelled his flight. For a man to be ready to die with sickness than to forgive, he wanted to hear. He said, sit down. The man sat down. He said, tell me what happened. The man began to cry. The man said, I was a soldier. I was fighting war in nations for years. Any money I get, I send to my wife. All I was being paid, I sent to my wife. I told her to build a house for us. She told me, yes, after about five years, she has built a house. I sent her money, buy cars. She said, sir, sometimes I get bullet injuries. They are treating me. I'm still fighting war. After 20 years, I returned. And then my wife told me there was a house. I went there. And I saw my wife. I was happy. But a man came out. The house was built in his name. I was wondering what was happening. While I was trying to argue, the man came with boys and they beat hell out of me. My wife said they should throw me out. So it took me almost a week in the hospital. I went to my wife's father. The brothers and all were using wood on my stomach. Beat me. That was how the bleeding started. See, for five years I've been bleeding. She took everything I got. I left the war with injuries. 25 years of my life. I gave everything to a woman that I love. If another man enjoying everything. And you say, God say, 
I should forgive. Thank you. I'm going. The man held and he began to cry. Young Cho began to cry. Do you know if you have not been there, it's easy to hear stories. I've been there. I have felt the pain. It got to a point in my life I said, I'm not going to help anybody again. I have helped somebody in my life. And it was used against me. I would sit and tears would come out of my eyes. The tears was not what people were saying. The tears was, this world is wicked. Oh, I mean, I would, I, I just, that's how I was. I would just, anybody, anybody. Even when I know you are lying, I still give you. And I heard somebody say so many things. And the only evidence was that he sent me money. And the evidence was true. But I sent you money because you reached out to me that you wanted help. If you have not been there, you won't know. For somebody you trusted so much to be using you. In this, polit this polytechnic, one of our brothers here was selling at the what do you call it? site, mechanic site. Trained a girl here. He dropped out of school to take her through school. His family took hands off him. He was an apprentice. Finally did his freedom. Trained her in school. ND, HND. In youth service, she did a marriage. I know some of you say, the boy is a fool. He's a fool. Uh, that's not life, Iso. The boy came to me crying. And I held his hand. I said, the good may be gone, but the best is coming. God knows how to pay you arrears. Never feel bad when people take your good for evil. Stand up, let me pray for you. Me, I drop that pain at your feet today 
heal me Lord heal me from pain heal me from pain from the yoke of the hearts of the past heal my heart whatever you are right here watching around the world ask God for heart healing heal my heart I forgive and I receive forgiveness I forgive and I receive forgiveness I forgive and I receive forgiveness heal my heart please Lord help me help me Lord Shanta Kabaladas Sokoto brothers. I receive heart healing, Lord. Heart healing. I Heart healing. I Pranos katanda laga leko to brashta Malere so pradash In Jesus name Your heart is healed Your heart is healed Now I'm going to pray this prayer Everybody listen to me Open your eyes one minute Lord increase my love for you When I look at some of you From the way you even pray I know if you love God Some of you Spiritual things don't mean anything to you anymore You just come to church to show up you have lost the reality of spirituality. Don't even pray. You can't pray effectively for two minutes. You are gone. You are gone. You are gone. Spiritually, you are gone. Lord, renew and increase my love for you. You are gone. When last did you open the Bible to study? When last did you open the Bible you want to read? When last did you wake up to pray? You are gone. You are gone. Do you know even some animals, some animals, why they are dead, they are still powerful. If you cut the head of a snake, you have to bury it deep on the earth. Are you aware? Because even the bone in the head is still poisonous. All the people you see, when you hear somebody say, I'm almost entering my Friday teaching. When you hear somebody say, I stepped on poison. Have you heard that before? It is done with the head of a serpent. Even dead animals. They are still powerful. You, you are, you are, you think you are alive. You are gone, gone. No value for things of the spirit. And the funny thing about such things is that even when you lose touch of the spirit, things may be happening physically for you, and you think everything is okay, until you finally meet something bam, that cuts you short. Renew and increase my love for you. Say in the name of Jesus. My father, my father. As I begin to pray, increase and renew my love for you. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Rakata, 
my love for you. Lord, I renew my love for you. I want to 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 renew my love for